Coming up in today's video, I show you how to make colour corrections that can change simple backgrounds from things such as this, to this, or this, or even this. Okay, so now that we know what we're doing today, we're building colour corrections, and I think it's always important to show people what I'm actually doing in the videos at the start now. Because I know a lot of people get turned away thinking well, this is going to be something different to what they think it might be. And hopefully, you know, you'll uh, you really begin to enjoy some of these tutorials. I mean, I'm hoping that you're learning enough as it is, but uh, well, I can only hope that uh, they are really helpful. Now, at the moment, what I have here is a standard partnership background which I designed just purely for this tutorial. And you know, at the moment, it looks quite feeble, and this is a great example of how a color correction can actually work. Now, at the moment. Okay, let's just have a look at what's wrong with this. Okay, so we've got red text and blue flares. So firstly, they don't match. Then we've got green streaks, which don't match either. Now, I don't know about you, but the glass doesn't look strong enough. It almost looks almost like it's just been, well, put there is another word, but it doesn't really look like it's part of the scene. So what, what do you do? How do you make a color correction? Well, a lot of people I've seen attempt to do videos, get a background and they go to image, adjustments, hue and saturation, they colorize it, and they think that by some magic this is a color correction. Well, I can tell you straight away it isn't. Other people just do this, where they get a layer, they get, let's say red, that didn't look like red to me, okay, let's say they get a red, and they fill it in a bit and they just change it to color. Well, that doesn't work either. So, how do you actually make a color correction, a successful one? I mean, how does it how do you do it? Well, what I want to show you today in the color correction is the simplest and smartest way of building a customizationable color correction. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the bottom first, and the way we're going to work is we're going to build some layers, and these layers are going to be affecting the piece by the blend mode. That's the main thing for this video. So the first thing that we're going to do is pick one color. Now this color is meant to be the color that you want your background to be. So whether it's a red or a blue or a green or anything like that, just pick one color. Now before we go any further, what I'm going to ask you to do is to make a folder or a group. Go to the bottom of the screen, you've got a dustbin at the very bottom corner. Next to it there's a bit of paper which is making new layers. Next to that is the folder which we need, and the one next to that is the yin yang sign which we're going to keep going back to. So firstly make a group and rename the group CC, and you can name whatever you want, CC is just colour correction for short, and it can be red. And what you're going to do is you're literally going to build your stuff in the folder, so grab the layers and put them inside the folder and this is where we're going to build and build and build our color correction now at the moment the color is completely distorting the page I can't see anything through it and a lot of people say why don't you just put it on overlay somehow I actually managed to miss the button okay well the problem with this is what it does is the blend mode isn't effective for it now, there's only one particular blend mode that's going to work really well for this some might for certain colors but the best one I find is hue so when you go up to the top click on this which is the blend mode on the drop down arrow and select the option called hue. Now when you select the option called hue the background doesn't distort in color the only things that change are things with light and subjects so you can actually see the text actually gets changed a little bit of color only very lightly if you zoom in. The streaks go red, the glow goes red and it's all already beginning to come together. Now the way that this works is we use something called a gradient map. Now this is the next step and we're gonna build three gradient maps in total and out of these three gradient maps, we're going to want one to be black and white. Now, this one is the only one I suggest that you add to every single color correction without fail. And it's the only one I ask that you do not edit. For the sole reason that if you remove this, actually I think edit is probably the strong word, do not delete. That's probably the better one. Because the way that this works is when we change the blend mode of this to overlay, it creates that bit of lighting that 
makes the dark dark and makes a contrast to the light. And this is where the beginning of the epicness can start to be seen. Now at the moment the overlay is a bit dark for me. For some people that actually might be all you need. But what I'm going to do is change the opacity to 50%. And by doing that, I'm not restricting myself to too much light or too much darkness. I'm, I'm just in that middle section. Now, before you go and edit it, you might want it to be darker at a later stage. I ask that you finish all of the layers first and then go back and edit. Because then you can actually look at the actual final result. Some of the things that we do early on here, they don't always last the whole way through. Right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to build another gradient map. So go back to the yin yang sign and click on the gradient map. Now we're actually going to be building three gradient maps. The first one, which we ask do not delete, and the other two, which are sort of ones which you can change in, in whatever way you want. Now one of the default ones is called violet and orange, so I'm actually going to choose this one. And on this one I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. Now this is the only bit of the tutorial where I say the two gradient maps that you choose are completely up to you. You can choose whatever ones you want, you can custom build your own ones, just you have to look at the final results, see how they look. I mean at the moment I can see some orange and purple tinting and at the moment that's pretty much all it is meant to do. But it gives it a different mood. If I turn it off you can see that it's lighter, this one gives it a bit of darkness, gives it a bit more tint in red. And this is where you just sort of muck around with the boundaries and understand whether it will work or not. Now the next gradient map is one that I ask, you find a colour, so for example, we used a purple, which was violet in this one. If I was to use that, make the second gradient map and find a gradient with a purple in it. Or make your own one with a purple in it. And reverse it so that the purple is the main first colour. Now some of you might ask why. Well basically the way that this is going to work is that if we're trying to say adding a bit of purple tint or whatever if we use two sets of purple on gradient maps even if one is reduced in opacity it's gonna just add to it and sometimes they even give it an even more enhanced view now when it comes to fire I think purple red and yellow are a fantastic combination now at the moment the glow on my flares looks a bit like a fire so that's why I'm choosing the purple. Now, like all the other layers before, I'm changing the blend mode to 50%. At the moment, I'm thinking maybe this is too much. So I'm going to change the opacity to about 18%. At the moment, I think that looks quite good. Now, you might want to change it depending on what yours looks like, if you've got any lights or glow or flares or anything really that's involved. Now, before you go, oh, well, it, it's too dark and, I, and I, don't, I don't really like it. Well, don't forget that we can do some small changes such as adding a brightness and contrast then when we do things like this we lighten up the whole document and with the contrast you're still making the areas that are dark darker so you're not even losing anything from it you're just building up what I can only say is a very epic atmosphere but for some you know maybe that's still not bright enough and you don't want to overdo it I really wouldn't overdo it just yet there's a few more steps involved and maybe these later steps might fix some of the things you're having now one of the most common problems with colour corrections is text. Now if the text or anything is below the colour correction then they get distorted. Now what we're going to do is we'll fix that later on with a very very simple tweak. Alright so the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to add a curves layer. Now at the moment because I'm using red as my main colour I ask you to go up to the top where it says RGB click on the drop down arrow and select the colour that corresponds to you the most. So I'm using red here, so I'm using red here to adjust first. Now if you're doing green then you do green, if you're doing blue you do blue. Now if there's anything between, say let's say you're making a purple, then you edit red and blue similarly. But this colour bit in the curves is actually where you make the last bit of change to it and, and you know this is where you can make those last minute tweaks on the lighting and reducing the lighting in certain areas and just generally changing a bit of the colour. Now when you compare red to green it actually makes things seem more clear and I know that seems stupid but it actually does seem to work. So if you're using glass like me I had a lot of red in this before but I thought the red was perhaps a little bit too much. Try and add a bit more of the other colours like the green and the blue just to compensate because what it might do is it might just balance the colours back out. 
Now, of course, you don't want to go a bit overboard, so just take it a bit easy, but... I mean, this is this is really coming on, and I, all I'm doing is simply mucking around with the curve. Now, I can't tell you exactly when to move the curve to. I just say to experiment, and if it doesn't go right, you just delete the curves layer and start again. Now, with red, I always say add more green. That is just generally how it would work. And the blue is sort of like the background colour, which you just use to, to polish off. So, it, with the blue at the moment, I, have, I generally have a small S curve. And you can see that because it goes up and down like that so it's only creating like a very small s now the green i'm doing what's called as an over curve or an arc over arc and this is where you go above the line and create a small curve that stays above the line the under arc is the red and that's where you go beneath the line and you just do a small curve underneath the line so i'm doing three different well curve movements basically but these can all vary depending on what yours looks like. Okay, now that I've done that, it's pretty much nearly finished. So there's only two more things that I'm actually going to add to this, and one of them is optional. Well, actually, everything is optional, but, you know, I suggest that you just follow as much as you can if you want to try and keep it as neat as possible. Okay, now for some people, maybe the lighting still isn't right, and this is where the final curves layer comes in handy. Now, what we got here is the RGB. Leave it on that one. And this one is going to work like a lighting and contrast at the same time. And you can even add a third point in to control the contrast a bit more. So maybe you want to reduce the contrast, but keep some of the light, and vice versa. Maybe you want to really boost it so it looks like fire and flames. And then again, you can just sort of put it back in the middle and, and leave it there. Now, at the moment, all I'm doing is pushing this top one up, which allows for an increase in brightness, so for the flares. And this one here, I'm not going so far as to increase a contrast, so I'm just leaving it above, so it's just sort of staying level, not going too far above and beyond. Okay, so that's pretty much the main bit. Now, the, the optional thing is a pattern. Now, a pattern that some people like to have going across their background, they think it adds to it. Well, I quite like patterns as well, so what we're going to do is we'll build one pattern layer. You don't have to add it if you don't have patterns or anything. However, if you're interested in learning about patterns or gradients, or you're interested in a graphic pack for either, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see what I can uh, conjure up. Provided on how successful this video is, then I might just release a colour correction pack with a few instructions on how to change a few things. Okay, so now I've added this pattern, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. And I'm just going to change the opacity on something like this to about 25%, which is not too much. It's just enough to see it, but not too much as to distort. Now, if you were having a problem with the text, and let's say the text is too dark, what you actually would end up doing is you would go and you'd build a new layer. So you go here to the bottom and you build a new layer. You get your paintbrush change the brush to a smaller size around about the same size as the text and pick a white color now that you've got a white color change the opacity of the brush to 25 percent and zoom in and what you're going to do here is without letting go of your mouse just draw over one bit of text when you've finished one bit of text so like facebook here let go of the mouse then redraw over the next bit and do this for all of the bits of text on your page when you've finished and you've highlighted all of these bits of text change the blend mode to overlay and it will actually add a bit of brightness but for some people it maybe it's not enough so okay so what do you do? do you just repaint well actually the simple thing is you just duplicate the layer by pressing ctrl j and you can press ctrl j again if you want to brighten it even more and the benefit of doing this is that you can actually just twiddle about with the opacity and you can even add colour to the text in this way at the same time if the colours got distorted at any point. So that's pretty much it. The link for this colour correction is going to be in the description. It's looking pretty damn nice, I'll give it that. Anyway, thank you for watching guys. Monk7Mad here. I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to like the video to show that you enjoyed this video. And for more tips, tutorials, giveaways just general help then uh, come to my channel and thank you for watching guys have a great day and as always take care